Hello, and welcome back to History of Goju Ryu. Before we get started, I'd like to say that in the time since the last episode I filmed and now, the Art of One Dojo channel has put out their first video in the History of Shotokan series. It's really wonderful, and I highly recommend you watch it if you enjoy this series. Mr. Dan and the Art of One Dojo channel are personal inspirations of mine, and some of their earlier series, including History of Kyokushin, were the impetus for me to start this series. Also, his editing is amazing. Now, let's get into it. While Miyagi Chojun didn't name an official successor to Goju Ryu before passing away in 1953, there are many who have claimed that title for themselves or for their sensei. Perhaps the earliest of these was Yamaguchi Gogen Jitsumi. Yamaguchi was born in Kyushu, Japan in 1909. At a young age, he began studying Jigen Ryu Kenjutsu, one of the traditional schools of Japanese swordsmanship. Later, he recounts meeting a karateka named Maruta Takeo, who was his introduction to karate. Maruta seems to have been his teacher for a long time. Yamaguchi would eventually enter the Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto, studying law. He began teaching karate during this time. In 1930, at the age of 21, Yamaguchi began the Ritsumeikan Karate Research Society, a club for practicing karate, with friend and fellow karateka Yogi Jitsue. It was around this time that he and Yogi wrote to Miyagi-sensei, inviting him to visit their university, an offer which would be accepted by Miyagi in 1931. Additionally, Yamaguchi seemed to get into a lot of trouble, including driving self-described leftist groups off of campus, as well as getting into many altercations. In 1931, Miyagi Chojun sensei visited the Ritsumeikan Karate Research Society, and he would return again in 1935. These are the only periods of time during which it was conceivable that Yamaguchi ever studied directly with Miyagi. According to Yamaguchi and his family, it was during this time that he was given the nickname Gogen, meaning loosely, rough. Yamaguchi asserts that Miyagi-sensei said to him, I have nothing more to teach you, and entrusted the task of spreading Goju Ryu on the mainland to him. Is this true? The short answer is, no one knows. The Yamaguchi family does not seem to have produced any documentation of this claim, and Miyagi-sensei never named any of his Okinawan students as a successor, despite training with them for many decades. However, it is undeniable that Yamaguchi spread Goju Ryu across mainland Japan, which is no small feat. Some have speculated that he may have never learned the full range of the Goju Ryu kata from Miyagi himself, and instead learned them from other students of Miyagi, such as Yagi Meitoku. Yamaguchi was also known for being a very spiritual individual, and was involved in an incredibly eclectic version of Shinto worship. He was also incredibly nationalist, and in 1938, joined the Japanese presence in Manchukuo. Manchukuo had been occupied since 1931, and some historians consider the Manchurian Incident to be the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War, one of the conflicts that makes up the historical understanding of World War II. Yamaguchi gives several fantastical accounts of his service in Manchukuo, including disarming multiple attackers with karate techniques, as well as a difficult fight with a local kung fu master. Perhaps the most fascinating account, albeit the least believable, is an attack by a thousand communist bandits, where he describes roundhouse kicking, finger striking, and jump kicking a number of armed bandits whose bullets and swords failed to do more than graze his left arm. While I suppose this account is possible, it's also very likely that the exact situation that occurred was misremembered on account of adrenaline or the passage of time. In 1945, the USSR entered the Pacific front of World War II, fighting on the side of the Allies against Japan, particularly in Manchuria and northern China. While Japan surrendered only weeks after the USSR began hostilities, the Soviet forces still took many POWs, including Yamaguchi Jitsumi. He would be a prisoner for two years, only returning to Japan in 1947. There is an apocryphal story claiming that Yamaguchi once fought and killed a tiger using his karate techniques. This may have been during his service in Manchuria, as he recounts once being captured by the Chinese government forces. However, since there was no Chinese government in Manchukuo at this time, it may have also transpired during his time as a POW. Or it might simply be a myth. After returning to Japan, Yamaguchi was despondent, as were many Japanese, due to the complete devastation that the war had brought. He recounts having a spiritual awakening, diving into Shinto and yoga practice. He is on film using a crystal ball for divination and communication with Shinto Kami, and was known to teach meditation based in Shinto and Buddhist practices. This practice does not affect most of his students in the Goju Kai, but is definitely interesting to witness. 
Yamaguchi Sensei established the Goju Kai organization in 1950 after his return from USSR control and quickly began promoting the organization throughout Japan. Perhaps his greatest claim to fame was his assertion that he introduced free sparring, known as Jiu Kumite, into karate practice as a result of his experience in Kenjutsu and other Koryu martial arts. While Okinawan karateka may have not practiced free sparring in the dojo, although this is a debatable claim, there are several accounts claiming that they either sought out or were thrust into street fights fairly often. However, Yamaguchi's style of free sparring may have influenced the point-based sparring contests that we see today in organizations such as the WKF. Yamaguchi was also instrumental in promoting karate across Japan and to America. In 1964, he helped to found an organization called the All Japan Karate Do Federation, which still exists as the JKF. He also took on many foreign students, including Peter Urban, who he met in 1954 and rapidly promoted to fifth dan by 1959. His sons, Gosei, Gosen, and Goshi, eventually brought the Goju Kai to the United States in the early 1960s. Eventually, Yamaguchi Jitsumi passed away in 1989, leaving behind a storied and controversial legacy. He passed on control of the Goju Kai organization to his children, who continue to teach his style. However, he has also drawn a lot of criticism from other factions of Goju Ryu for his eccentricity and fixation on situating himself as Miyagi's true successor. Nevertheless, he had a large influence on the landscape of Goju Ryu, and his organization and its alumni have brought Goju to a large number of people. Thanks for watching History of Goju Ryu and for making it through the video. I hope that I haven't alienated too many people whether your lineage comes from Yamaguchi Sensei or whether you disagree with his claims of successorship. My goal was to present him as an important martial artist, but also to acknowledge the controversies surrounding him. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment letting me know which karate master you'd like me to cover next. While you're down there, please also subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you know when I put out the next episode of the History of Goju Ryu. As always, I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and go out there and get an Ippon Gachi.